We are at Audio Advice covering this awesome consumer event that they're doing today. I'm looking at the Denon A1H, and let me tell you something, the pictures don't do it justice. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisello with AudioHawks. We got Nick Rich from Audio Vice. How are you doing, my friend? Doing well, doing well. Are you going to bench test this thing? Are you going to bench press it or bench test it? Uh, you know, I was thinking about a military press, and then maybe we'll bench test it. <laughs> this thing is, this is a beast. I said this before in our write-up, Denon went beast most again. This, the battle of super receivers is on. <laughs> it hasn't been waged since 2005 with the 5805, but now we're back. Then in through everything but the kitchen sink in the 70 pound 15.4 channel AVR. Mm -hmm. And I want to just give you guys a little bit details on it. We are going to do a formal review with bench tests, but I have some inside info because we went to Massimo a couple of weeks back and we got the details from the engineers. There's some impressive tech in here. Let's just go over a little bit yeah, about this, yeah, Nick. Absolutely. So first of all, this is a 15 channel AVR 150 watts per channel times 15, class AB amplification. They have monolithic amplifiers on each of these little cards here. Really nice extruded aluminum heat sinks with a copper uh, plating over here for better yeah, conductivity. Massive heat sinks to massive. go along with that. Yeah, those have are you, How many AVRs have you seen that have heat sinks There's like not this? really. I mean, the, mostly power amps are gonna have heat sinks that big. Yeah, this is, it looks like a multi-channel power yeah, amp it when does. you look at this. Yep. And the, look at the size of this E-Core transformer, 25 pounds. This thing is this thing weighs more than most entry-level Denon mm -hmm. receivers. Yep, yeah. I mean, I lifted this thing before we started, and what is it, 70 pounds? Yeah. It's an absolute beast. It is. Now, I know people are going to be like, well, how come it doesn't have a toroidal <laughs> power supply? It doesn't mean that that's bad. Mm -hmm. Toroids and E-Cores are both equally good if they're used within our application. Mm -hmm. The reason why they use an E-Core in this case is if they didn't use an E-Core and they use a toroid, the thing would have been wider because yeah. there's so much to fit in here. If you design an E-Core properly and you control it so it doesn't saturate, it's equally as good as a toroid. This thing, they put a lot of effort into this power supply. This is, also has a copper base plate as well. The capacitors are four pole capacitors, so it reduces the inductance of them. They're 33,000 microfarads, 80 volt caps times two. That's a huge power supply <laughs> in an AVR. You are not gonna find this in any AVR today out there, as far as I know. And it's just the amount of detail that they put in this thing. Look at all of the heat sinking on the HDMI boards. Yeah. So, so looking at this HDMI board with all these massive heat sinks, they put tons of engineering resources into this technology. And it's basically, if you're a gamer, this is your fantasy receiver right here. You want to tell us why? Yeah, yeah. So if you're using the next gen consoles and you want to use 4K, 120 hertz, or you want to use variable refresh rate, anything like that, this is going to be able to support it. So we've got, let's see, seven inputs, and every one of them are 8K. So they're all capable. And uh, you know, it's a full 40 gigabyte, uh, you know, bandwidth. So you know, I think this is going to be a perfect receiver for gamers as well. Yeah, I mean, well, tell us about the processor section. So what makes this processor more, you know? special than some of the others that we'd see in like the entry level lineup. So there's just so much that not only is it the channel density, but the fact that it has four independent subwoofer outputs and they have this thing called directional base, which the jury is still out on. You could actually route base to each corner of the room, depending on the channel yep. groups and all that stuff. We're going to do more videos on that yep. as well. But if you think about it, the processing architecture in here in the DAC system, they use the ESS 9018 stereo DACs. Mm -hmm. They use, uh, I think 10 of them. So one, one of them's not used, so obviously it's 19 channels with the four subs. Mm -hmm. Very similar to the Marantz AV10. So there's a lot of DNA from the AV10 in this product. The only thing that's missing is the HDAM. <laughs> it was a funny name. <laughs> <laughs> the HDAM preamp circuit, that's exclusive to the Marantz line. But the processing in here is quite impressive. The fact that it has the Odyssey Pro, the PC yeah. software, and you're going to be able to, for a nominal fee, I think it's like, what, 300 bucks? Yeah, probably around 300, 350 to upgrade. You're going to be able to have Direct Live and eventually the Direct Bass Control, we hope. <laughs> we hope, fingers crossed. So the fact that it has multiple speaker profiles, this is the first receiver that I know of 
that you could calibrate for Odyssey and Dirac, and you could finally end that age-old question, which one's better, you could set it up on different profiles yeah, yeah. and do your own comparisons. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on how tweaky you are, too. I mean, sometimes people's skill level will decide what room correction works best for them. So, you know, maybe Odyssey will work best for some people, and then, you know, maybe some people will be able to play with Dirac and have a lot better experience with that. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the power again, because I'm a, I'm a stickler for flagship <laughs> receivers. I get this is like my favorite kind of category of product. So people, I know people on the YouTube below are going to be like, well, how much power is it all channels driven? <laughs> all channels. All channels driven is not a realistic test scenario. And we do test up to seven channels, all channels driven, mostly to see how much the power supply is capable of, mm -hmm. to see if you could actually get all that power from the wall socket. Obviously, this is a 15 amp uh, circuit on here. So that's all you can get from the outlet. You can't do more than that. Mm -hmm. I looked at some of the bench tests that Sound United, uh, Sound United Massimo Consumer <laughs> sent me. This thing will do 70% of its 150 watt rating, which is 105 watts times nine channels driven simultaneously. When you think about the efficiency of class AB and you add the power consumption of the preamp circuit, that means that this thing is pulling 1,300 watts out of your wall. That's close to the 15 amps. I've got high hopes. I mean, looking under the hood, feeling the weight, and yeah. you know, just the science behind it that Mossman was talking about. I mean, I, I think that I think it's going to be a, a really, really great receiver for the money. I yeah, mean, you're, it's expensive. It's but. expensive. It's it ain't cheap to be hip and trendy. <laughs> but it's a one box solution. Yeah. And there's really nothing else in the market that's doing exactly what this one does. Yeah. And the amp section, even though it's 150 watts a channel rated, I think they, uh, they were telling us it'll actually do about 170, 175 watts. And at four ohms, you're looking at close to 300 watts a channel with up to two channels driven. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. We'll probably do three channels driven at th almost 300 watts just based on the size of this power supply. The amount of heat sinking, I think there's like four or six fans. I think there's six fans <laughs> underneath the heat sinking. Yeah. So it'll really keep this thing running cool when you're really hitting it hard. I want to show you guys the back panel here because there's a lot of gazintas and gazatas of this thing. Look at all the speaker pre-outs. There's, there's literally 17 connections for speakers. So even though there's only a 15 channel amp, you can actually switch between different speaker layouts, whether you're doing Oro 3D for like the two or three demo discs that you might have because there's no real content in Oro. Mm -hmm. You could support that and add the extra Voice of God speaker here if you but want. So everything past the first five channels is assignable, right. and which, which is great. You know what, we'd of course like to see every channel assignable, but yeah. you know, that's a, that's a great, great way to do it. The other thing that this receiver has, it only the only other receiver I know that has XLR inputs and outputs is the Yamaha Avantage A6A and 8A. Mm -hmm. This actually has four assignable output so if you don't use these as a sub out you could use them as xlr for the lcr for your front three mm -hmm. speakers to a separate power amp and then it has the xlr inputs if you're an audiophile and you want to do a really high quality analog source into it yeah and i love that they did balance balance outs for your subs because a lot of the sub runs are really long yeah. and so having the balance connection is going to be extremely advantageous for that absolutely so one thing that's missing from this and i'm going to keep talking about this <laughs> Because I'm a legacy guy, I still play Nintendo Wii, okay? Don't judge me. <laughs> there's no S-video, there's no composite, there's no component video on this. So if you're stuck in the 80s or 90s like me, and you're still rocking a VCR, <laughs> you're gonna have to get a dongle from Amazon or something to convert it to HDMI. Yep, yep, so you may have to reconsider if you're wanting to use your LaserDisc player or uh, yeah. in, in Gene's case, the Wii Fitness. So one of those two, I you gotta may stay have to shape somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's just a lot to love about this. They, they redid Heos. I've, supposedly, it's a big step up. Yeah. The new GUI is supposed to be incredible. It's 1080p now, right? Yeah, yeah, and they also have Chromecast, and I think AirPlay 2 on here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, Chromecast is what I use for most things. And so the fact they added Chromecast, you can use their multi-zone as well, and Heos. And so with the big upgrade to Heos, that's going to be you know, massive. But if you have, you know... Google Assistant in your house or, yeah, well, pretty much Google Assistant is the main one that you're going to use with Chromecast. It's going to work flawlessly and it's going to be high res as well. So it can play up to 2496. Awesome. So I want to challenge you guys because you have the ultimate setup at this. This is <laughs> the best showroom I've ever been to. When you set this up, can you set it up with one sub in each corner and test the directional base versus mono sum? I mean, yeah, we're going to we're gonna try to run it through its, its entire paces. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to try to do as much as we can with this, you know. Uh, it, outside of an anechoic chamber, we'll see what we can do. Well, you don't want to listen to an anechoic chamber. <laughs>
Well, guys, I'm looking forward to seeing their coverage. I'm looking forward to our coverage as well, because this is a product that's worth talking yep. about. I love the super receiver. I wish more companies will basically follow suit. I, Yamaha, hello. Onkyo, <laughs> hello. Let's, let's step up the game here if you can. Guys, if you like this video, please thumb it up. Don't hit this, hit the subscribe button to our channel. Don't forget about our Patreon at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. <laughs>